Yes, uh, UPRT stands for Upset Prevention and Recovery Training. And the UPRT is the comprehensive mitigation of what's called loss of control in flight or LOCI. So UPRT is a series of training interventions, practices, techniques, philosophies to give pilots in the cockpit the knowledge and the awareness and the skills to recognize, prevent, and or recover from what's called an airplane upset. And an airplane upset is a precursor to loss of control in flight. It's a set of parameters that defines when an airplane is approaching a situation where loss of control in flight becomes a, a real threat. Uh, so before I start into defining uh, what UPRT actually is, I think it's important to talk about what its origins are. And I can tell you right now that UPRT is not well understood in the aviation industry. And in fact, uh, providers that used to provide aerobatic training or uh, emergency maneuver training or unusual attitude training or advanced maneuvers training very often see, hey, UPRT is the new buzzword, so I'm going to take down this shingle and put up another one. Well, UPRT is way more than that. Most organizations that deliver UPRT, number one, don't know what it is, and the training they deliver doesn't comply with the intent of what UPRT is. So let, let's talk about where it came from first, then I'll talk about what it is. So I'll try to be as succinct as I can. I'll try to make this brief. It really is a long topic, but let me try to break it down into those elements. So where it came from, it originated really uh, through the Royal Aeronautical Society in 2009. And, and this group of experts was brought together as an industry body to address loss of control in flight because loss of control in flight has been a prevalent threat for the past 50 years, ever since we started tracking data. And the last 15 to 20 years has become the number one threat. And I think that the challenge with loss of control in flight is that there's no one single solution that can solve it. It's not about just putting a piece of technology in the cockpit and solving it. It's not about reading a document or watching a video or improving one area of training that can mitigate the threat of loss of control in flight is really an integrated approach that has to be taken to address loss of control. So this body that got together in 2009 created an organization or a working group, probably more correctly, is that was called ICATE, and that's I-C-A-T-E-E. -E. And that stands for International Committee for Aviation Training in extended envelopes. And it was a group of about 80 industry experts, about 40 organizations from around the world representing training organizations, OEMs, uh, safety organizations, that got together and really spent about five years investigating loss of control in flight and how to overcome it through various interventions. So in November of 2014, ICAO published what's called the ICAO Manual on Aeroplane Upset Prevention and Recovery Training, which really embodied much, if not all, the recommendations of the group of ICATI. And this was done in concert with the FAA that was mandated by Congress to develop increased capabilities in addressing stall, upset recognition, and recovery training. And so this document, ICAO 111-10011, embodies the high-level concepts of what upset prevention and recovery training is. And we at APS, having been part of that working group and helping uh, shape what was adopted by the National Aviation Authorities, we actually officially adopted UPRT way in the early stages. 2010 is when we adopted the name UPRT. So it is now the word that is used internationally and nationally, at least in the United States, to address upset prevention recovery training. So that's where it came from. Now, what is the scope of UPRT? Because I think that's really, really important. So it really embraces the full spectrum of interventions. So it embraces the work of not only just by ICAO, but also by CAST, the Commercial Aviation Safety Team, has issued 19 enhancements to address airplane state awareness. They fall under the umbrella of UPRT, and they address different areas individually. Uh, working groups like the GAJSC also have a series of safety enhancements that address other little elements of loss of control and flight, and they also fall under that umbrella. 
that is, that is encompassed by the definition or the structure that has been laid out by ICAO. It also addresses other areas of training. Human factors, spatial disorientation, distraction, pilot monitoring are all integrated into the UPRT footprint. So that's kind of where it came from and that's kind of an idea of its scope. So what exactly is UPRT? So the upset prevention and recovery training approach by ICAO uh, really encompasses two different levels of three interventions. So what I mean by that is is that the interventions are awareness, prevention, and recovery. Three different phases that work together. Awareness addresses the knowledge of the pilot, the decision making of the pilot, the airmanship of the pilot. Prevention really deals with recognition and having the skills and knowledge of seeing an airplane upset evolving way early so it doesn't actually meet the definition of an airplane upset so they can stop it in its tracks. By far prevention, that prevention layer, is the most critical layer of upset prevention and recovery training. The third one is the recovery where the airplane has passed certain parameters where now the pilot needs to intervene to recover the airplane and generally those skills exceed the limits of today's licensing training. So I keep talking about an airplane upset and we see we have awareness, prevention, and recovery. And what separates prevention and recovery is some kind of a definition. Well, an airplane upset is defined as pitch attitudes as little as 25 degrees nose up, 10 degrees nose down, bank angles up to 45 degrees of bank, or any conditions within or outside those definitions that are at inappropriate air speeds or angles of attack. So that would encompass stalls, high speed conditions, and, and other areas that threaten the control of the airplane. So the transition between prevention and recovery is an unintentional situation created that exceeds those parameters. Now technically it becomes recovery. Prior to that, the real focus of UPRT is where prevention occurs. But a true comprehensive footprint and upset prevention recovery training addresses all three areas. Now I said it was two sets of three. So in addition to awareness, prevention, and recovery, there's now the integrated approach to upset prevention and recovery training. And what that means is that there's no one single medium of training that can comprehensively address the loss of control and flight threat. So that breaks down to academic training, both instructor-led and preparatory distance learning online training, for example, on aircraft training, and it's critical that that training develops skills and techniques that are transferable into the commercial uh, airline world, into the business operating world, into the general aviation world to make sure those techniques are transferable. And then there's simulator training. So they're academic on aircraft and simulator training. And in the simulator training, there's two flavors. There's non-type specific simulator training, and then there's type specific simulator training. In those concepts of awareness, prevention, recovery, the integrated approach of academic on aircraft and simulator are all uh, comprehended by the ICAO manual on UPRT and also fairly well detailed at a high level as to what uh, it addresses. So there's a few critical areas. If you've watched this far in the video, uh, there's a few critical areas that are really important for uh, organizations to be looking for. First off, they need to see that integrated approach. They need to see academics. They need to see on-aircraft training. They need to see simulator training. If you're flying anything in the regime of a multi-engine turboprop or business jet or transport category airplane, you really need uh, all three of those. The other thing that is critically important is what's called training versus exposure. Because of the prevalence and intensity of the threat of loss of control in flight, it's not about just getting exposed to situations and you're trained. That's not it at all. In fact, exposure does little to nothing, and if anything, it might create a false sense of security to pilots. What they really need to have is intense training to embed awareness, to embed knowledge, embed skills, to make sure they walk away with retainable, retainable capability to address the loss of control in flight threat. Uh, the third area to look for, is it really needs to be training focused on the particular pilot. What type of airplane do they fly? How do they fly that airplane? What is their mission, for example, to make sure that those skills are not only transferable, but address their concerns as well that they have uh, in the industry. Now, the last area uh, is part of it is intuitive, part of it is not intuitive. So the intuitive part is this. 
and I'll leave probably the most critical area to the end. So the intuitive part of it is that when you're delivering upset prevention and recovery training, there needs to be a margin of safety in all aspects of that training. Okay, so very often people think a margin of safety is more the airplane uh, certification. That, that really is true too, so let's talk about that first. So the margin of safety in the type of airplane used matters a lot. So an aerobatic airplane, for example, far exceeds the capability to deliver UPRT than a normal category airplane, for example, and most utility category airplanes. You see in a utility category airplane, you don't really know what it's certified to because it can vary depending on how the utility category was created. It may fall under normal category, some parts may fall under aerobatic category. Uh, the simulator, for example, for margin of safety, is that the simulator training has to be conducted in what's called the valid training envelope. In other words, the simulator training has to be delivered in a way by which the simulator is simulating how the real airplane would operate to a certain level of fidelity. And it's important for training delivered in simulators to understand what the limits of the valid training envelope are for that particular simulator. So that's kind of the, the traditional look at margin of safety. But there's other areas of margin of safety. For example, in the maneuvers being accomplished, the maneuvers being accomplished in the program or the UPRT program have to address the loss of control and flight threat, but they can't be maneuvers that are at the limit of the airplane being used because I can tell you that pilots in training can and will exceed those limits. So the scope of the program always has to fall short of the capabilities of both the airplane and the instructor. So the last area of margin of safety I want to talk about, and that is the one that is probably the most critical area of upset prevention and recovery training is the instructor. You can have the best curriculum, the best training program, the best uh, airplane, the best simulator, the best tools, the best technology, and that's either going to be made or broken by the instructor. The most important element in upset prevention and recovery training is the qualified instructor that has a broad scope understanding not only of UPRT, but the intended application of those knowledge and skills to make sure that the training being delivered is number one safe first and foremost, positively transfers, and adequately comprehends how that particular pilot is going to use those skills in the world that they live in. So there's really a lot to it. So uh, it, UPRT is really, really exciting. It has to be done properly. And done properly, we should see the loss of control and flight threat dropping over the years as proper UPRT is delivered. The one concern that we have as a training organization that we feel really we are a leader in this field, probably the biggest threat to air safety right now is these organizations that don't understand UPRT starting to deliver training that actually can make the threat worse, not better. And what I mean by that is we have people out there in aerobatic airplanes teaching things that are type specific to the training platform that work in little airplanes but don't work in big airplanes or worse can lead to a catastrophic event. And so that is really a major concern. So done properly, UPRT can make a tremendous impact on safety. Done improperly, we can actually see the threat of loss of control and flight getting worse. So as an organization looking for training, make sure you get industry compliant upset prevention and recovery training. And that way you'll be safer in your airplane every single day you fly.